here's the six different kinds of work. The first one, the first working genius is called wonder. Okay, most people don't even think this is a working genius. This is up at 50,000 feet, by the way. And this is somebody that loves to naturally, my wife does this, loves to sit around and ponder things and think about things and ask questions like, why are things like that? Is this really the best it can be? Is there another way to do this? That is an absolute genius. God gave some people the ability to be great at that and other people never do it. Johnny's blushing. <laughs> and that per, per our conversation before this got started, I was talking about a lot of questions that I was pondering as of lately throughout the last few years, because that is the natural state that I'm constantly in asking questions looking for answers, pondering it in my own life. And I'll go out on a run and then I will come back and be like, AJ, I got, I got some ideas I got to run by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to be sitting down for this conversation. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I was walking out of the house today. She and I were exercising and praying and talking and I was walking out of the room and she goes, oh, wait, wait. Hey, I have a question for you. And I said, hey, is this one of those wonder things? Because if it is, we probably should do it later because I got to go. She was like, yeah, it is. And so, we, okay, we'll talk about it later. Because <laughs> you're not always in the right time to wonder, but it's critical in every activity. It's also okay to say, okay, I can set my wonder aside for a moment. My favorite one, which is the second genius, which is called invention. There are people who wake up every morning and love to come up with new ideas, even if it's not necessary. That's what I do. <laughs> and it's, it's a God-given talent, and it's not more important than the others. People think that inventors are genius. Everybody's a genius, but I like to come up with new ideas. And so I have a ton of them. And anytime somebody comes to me with a problem, I love to solve it, and I love to do it in some unique, novel way. And I like not having a lot of context. It's like, hey, let me just take a shot at that. So invention is really important. And these first two, wonder and invention, are what's called ideation. This is where new ideas come from. So that's the first two, wonder and invention. But you can't stop there because after invention comes the next one, which is called discernment. This is people that have good gut feel, instincts, intuition. They're good at pattern recognition and what you call integrative thinking. It's not based on expertise, specific knowledge, or data. They just have a good gut. Tracy, a woman in our office who I've worked with forever, she said even as a child, people would come to her and ask her for advice. And my wife will say to me, I'll say to my wife, hey, should we re refinance our home? Or do you think we should go on vacation here? Or do you think this looks good at what I'm wearing? And she'll say the same thing no matter what I ask her. Ask Tracy. Tracy has great instincts. And everybody knows it. And it's one of those skills. It's a, it's a true talent. When an inventor comes up with a new idea, you take it to somebody with great discernment. And they can immediately look at it and go, I think this is really great. This is really promising. Or, ooh, I... My gut tells me there's a whole bunch of problems here. And they are good at giving feedback and vetting an idea and helping tweak it. And so the inventor and the discerner talk back and forth. Well, if you don't know that's your skill, we had a guy write to us and say, I thought my wife didn't like me. And we were like, what? And he goes, I really mean it. He laughed. He goes, he, because we finally talked to him. He said, I thought she kind of hated me. We were like, why? He goes, I come up with new ideas all the time. And every time I do, she tells me what's wrong with it. I thought she was just trying to bust my, you know, whatever. On their anniversary, they took the assessment. She was a discerner. He was an inventor. <laughs> and she said, no, that's how I help you, honey. And he was like, so you don't, you just don't want to crush my dreams? He goes, no, I want to make sure that would actually work. And he said, that's the day they went from thinking we were working against each other to we were actually just doing what we're naturally best at. After that comes galvanizing. That's some people love this. I don't. And I was doing this almost every day at work. And that's how this whole thing came about. I was frustrated because every day I'd come in work ready to invent. And I was constantly galvanizing. Galvanizing is people who wake up in the morning and love to rally the troops, keep them pushed forward, keep inspiring them, reminding them, hey, let's do it. Come on, we can do it. Now I can do it once, maybe twice. But I don't love doing it. I like to move on to the next thing. And there are people, there are galvanizers out there that just love that process. And it is an absolute inherent God-given genius. And, some, and it's like their best thing in the world to do. One man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> Galvanizing. Those middle two we call activation. That's how you take the ideation and figure out, is this the right thing? And how do we get people on board? The last two are called implementation. And that is the next genius is enablement. Now, I know people, we struggled with this word because people said, well, that sounds like drug addiction or alcoholism. We're like, no, enabling somebody to do something good is really good. And there's some people that are naturally good at hearing somebody say, I really want to do this. And they say, 
ooh, let me help you. What do you need? How can I be of assistance to you? It's not because they're nice. It's not because they're easily manipulated. People that have enablement as a genius tend to think, oh, it's not a genius. I'm just helpful. It's like, no, no, no. Some people wake up every morning and say, if somebody would just ask me to help them, I would be the happiest person in the world. Let me know what you need and I will do it. I'll probably do a little bit more. I'll look around the corner for you and I'll anticipate your needs and they just naturally do it. Now, I should say this though. Everybody has to do things they don't love sometimes. So sometimes I just got to stand in the corner and do what she asked me to do. None of us get to go to work or be at home and do things that we don't love, but we don't want to put ourselves in a position to do it a lot. We certainly don't want to be in a position to live in our frustrations because that leads to burnout, really difficult things in life. And God did not make us to be miserable in our work or in our lives. He gave us talent so we could use them. It's wonderful. And they're all needed. They're all needed. So the last, the last genius is beyond enablement. It's one thing to want to help people. It's another thing to want to finish things. This is called tenacity. I have none of this. These are people that wake up in the morning and say, please let me finish something. I want to push through obstacles. I want to wrestle things to the ground. I want to prove that it can be done. And I want to make, I want to do it on time. I want to meet the standards. I want to say, yes, we finished. So it goes like this. Wonder at a high level, asking the question. Invention, solving the problem in a unique way. Discernment, evaluating it and making sure it's right. Galvanizing, getting people on board. Enabling, coming alongside and helping. And tenacity, finishing. There is not a project in the world doesn't need all of those things. All human beings have talents that are necessary. Find out what they are so you can do the things you're meant to do and your success and your joy will be greater than ever.